Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're on the ground in Phoenix, Arizona at the Phoenix Convention Center with 8,000 attendees of the Grace Harper Celebration of Women in Computing. And it's put on by an organization called the Anita Borg Institute. And we're really excited for this next segment to get Telly Whitney on, the president and CEO of the Anita Borg Institute, to give us the kind of the background of what's going on. So first, welcome. Thanks for stopping by on, I'm sure it's been a very busy day. Oh, it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. So why don't you give us, for the people, we had never heard of this event until Really, we were told by some of the uh, Intel social media team that, hey, you guys got to get down there. There's a lot of great things happening. So give us a little history on the Anita Borg Institute and then a little bit of history on this uh, on the show. Okay, so close your eyes and it's 1994 and that is the year that Anita Borg and I, Anita was a close friend, held the first Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing Conference. We held it in Washington, D.C. There were 500 women. For myself as a computer scientist, it was a life-changing experience because I had never been in a room of so many women. And, and as I understand it, it was really about being in a room with other women involved in the industry really is more of a peer networking opportunity. Well, from the very beginning, there was two very important aspects. One was the connection. Having the chance to meet with other women, I mean, that was what, what gave you hope for the rest of the year. And there's also inspiration. I mean, hearing from these remarkable women talking about their technical journey was really helped all of the attendees to aspire for more. For the first quite a few years, we held it every three years. Okay. Then Anita Borg founded the Institute for Women in Technology in 1997, and we took over the Grace Hopper Celebration as part of that. Okay. I became CEO in 2002, um, and Anita Borg um, passed, passed away. She had brain cancer, so I really helped out. I came out reluctantly for a while, and I've been there for 12 years. And and talk about the name, Celebration of Women in Computing. You know, I love, you're using a lot of great uh, adverbs here. It's a celebration, so why did you pick that number? Really, what does that represent? Well, you've got to Just understand that for women who often feel very isolated in their roles, the chance to celebrate the achievements of all these remarkable women is really important. And at this point, as you mentioned, we're at 8,000 women. We have 4,800, we have 48, 2,800 students, we have 2,800 students, and we have a lot going on. It's become much more of a platform. Universities bring a lot of their students because the data says that it helps them to stay in the discipline. Okay. We have a lot of companies that bring a large number of their employees because they have found that it helps to retain those female employees. Increasingly, we have executives. You saw the CEO of Microsoft speak this morning. Right. We have a number of other CEOs. And they come and they meet with their employees. And it really means a lot to the women who work for them about um, that they have a commitment to bringing more women into their company. And then we also have well over 200 companies that come here to recruit. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you've got the education track and you've got the recruiting track. And I think I saw, I saw an email uh, thread where I think Google has like 450 people attending the show. That's amazing turnout. Right, so companies like Google, I mean, they really are very thoughtful about their participation at Hopper. They have quite a few executives. Um, the best known is Alan Eustace, who's been on our board for a long time and was a close friend of Anita Borg's. He was on the Male Allies panel last night. But they actually have a large number of their executives at the most senior level. They bring a lot of their women. They also support a lot of their students to come. So they really see themselves as organizing across their own pipeline. So let me shift gears a little bit. Let's go back before 1994. And I wonder if you can share a little bit about your story, what it was like in the early days um, as a woman in computing. Well, I got my, I, all my degrees are in computer science. I got my degree from University of Utah in 1978. And I stumbled across computer science. I knew nobody who was an engineer in my family. And I really 
I, but I found that I was really good at it. And so I took a class and I stayed with it. Then I had the opportunity to go to Caltech to graduate school. I was introduced to people who were founding the department at that point. And at that point, I learned about VLSI, and which is integrated circuits, right. it's building ships. And so I loved it, but there were not many, there were not many women around. Um, I loved what I did, but I was always the only woman. So tell I'm going to give you the last word for the people that were not familiar with the celebration. Um, why should they come next year? You said it's going to be in Houston. It moves around. Give a little plug for uh, the 15th annual celebration of women in computing. The Great Hopper Celebration is a remarkable place for women in technology and for organizations that have a large technical workforce. You will find that it is life-changing, inspirational, and remarkable. It will change your life. Terrific. Well, thank you for taking a few uh, moments out of your very busy day. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground at the Grace Hopper Celebration for Women in Computing in Phoenix, Arizona at the Phoenix Convention Center. Thank you.